Jason Chambers, acting CEO of Kids Safe. There is a saying, home safe home. But it's not really for children, is it, Jason? Tell us a little bit more, mate. That's right. The home's actually the most common place where children are injured. Uh, it's probably a place that we often think of as safe, but it does have a lot of potential hazards for them and a lot of injury risks in there for them. So it is, um, particularly for very young children, something that us as adults is really important that we make our homes as safe as they possibly can be for our kids. But you walk into, into a home, or people bring me to the, the baby home, uh, a lot of these issues we're really not aware of, are we? we? There's no real checklist out there, apart obviously from the Kids Safe one which we've got on the screen. But some of the things that people should, should start to look at yeah, that's right. A lot of the things we might not be aware of, particularly if we haven't had children in our homes before, there might be things that haven't even crossed our mind. But um, some things to start looking at are the storage of poisons. So where they're st stored, they should be stored up high in a locked cupboard out of reach. Um, things like uh, electrical sockets uh, that might pose a hazard for children, stairs, um, water um, can also pose a hazard for children. So things like nappy buckets that might have water in them, um, mop buckets inside the house, pets drinking bowls, all those sorts of things um, are also a hazard for children. And then there's things in the kitchen as well. So things like um, hot appliances, hot water um, that all pose a risk for them as well. But obviously you've got to look how your house runs. I mean, there are busy times in the house. Let's face it, in the morning, mum and dad are trying to get the kids off to school. They're cooking the breakfast, they're packing the books, and then they've got to get in the car and get off to the, off to the school. That's, that's one of the most dangerous times around the home. That's right, and it is when we see a lot of injuries happen is when there is that rush and sort of changes in um, in routine. So it is a, particularly at that time um, when meals are being cooked and parents are coming and going from the house, um, that is a, a really important time to make sure um, that those safety measures are in place to help keep the, keep the kids safe during those times. And of course the danger increases for parents when they not only have one child, but maybe they've got two or three and they are of different ages which means that each child has got a different safety regime. That's right, and uh, those different children at different ages will have access to a different range of hazards. Um, the ones that will be more, more mobile will be able to move around a lot more. So that's where it, it does make it um, does make it quite difficult as well for, for parents. But that's where things like our, our simple home safety checklist can really help parents and carers to put those measures in place to help keep all of their children safe. And of course we have a, a few really special rules and uh, where there are uh, children basically in the bath and the phone goes. That's right, to, to never leave them unattended. So to ignore all the other things and always have that constant adult supervision um, around the bath, around any water source. And the same goes for a lot of other hazards in the home as well. Having that um, active adult supervision is the, the best way to help make sure that the kids are kept safe. It really is in some cases constantly reviewing your home because things can change if you bring something different into it. Uh, things can change where children start to climb. That, that's right, it could be something bringing in a new bookshelf or a new cabinet, something like that. Um, renovations in the home, even just moving some of your furniture around can alter the home environment and introduce some, some new hazards. So it is something for parents and carers to have constantly on their mind. And it's not just a one-off thing to do, but to regularly do um, and to make sure that the children are kept safe. Staircases uh, are very dangerous, especially for young babies and toddlers. And so really the thing is there is to basically put in a barrier. That's right, to have a barrier such as stair gates at the top and the bottom is a really effective way which reduces um, children's un unsupervised access to the stairs, um, particularly when they do get to that age where they're starting to crawl and walk, where the stairs are something they'll love to go and play on. So having those barriers in place are a really good way just to restrict their access to, to those types of hazards. And the other issue, the last issue we'll touch on, which is something that we do see sadly a bit of, and that is driveway runovers. That's right, the driveway is a really dangerous place for, for children. It is um, just like a road, so it's built for the cars to come in and out of, and tragically we do see 
a number of children across the country every year who um, are run over in driveways. So particularly, as we mentioned before, in those really busy times, the off-to-school and um, off-to-work times and the coming home from school and coming home from work times are really, um, really important times to be really vigilant around driveways and make sure that someone's supervising the children safely, holding their hands in a safe spot away from the driveways um, when those vehicles are coming and going. Now, Jason, we've just said people need reminding every day on the screen, we've got the Kids Safe Home Safety Checklist. Can you tell us about that checklist? What does it actually do? Uh, this checklist takes parents and carers through all areas inside and outside the home. So it goes through um, by areas, so by the kitchen, by bedrooms, even your outdoor shed and garage, um, and points out a few of the hazards that may exist and then gives some really simple solutions about how the risk um, posed by those hazards can be reduced. Um, so it is a really handy one for all parents and carers to have and to be able to go through in their own homes. And of course, uh, Jason, we know that the most common place that this checklist, once it's downloaded from the computer, uh, basically goes on the fridge door. Why is that important? Uh, that's really important because it does have it there. It's in the well, probably one of the most used places in the house. It's really visible and does act as that um, constant reminder about the hazards and those simple measures that can be put in place. So that just ensures that it is there, it's accessible and there to, to go back through um, and review those hazards and the safety measures, measures that are put in place. So the checklist that we're talking about is available on the KidSafe website. You can download as many copies as you like uh, and we also find it's popular with local councils. Uh, that's right, it's popular with local councils. It can be um, downloaded and printed um, to be handed out to parents. It can be linked to on local council websites um, and also on social media accounts as well. It's a really good one to, to link to um, to make available for parents and carers in the local area. So if you're a local community group and you've got Facebook or council with the Facebook, you can actually just put this sheet on and spread it right throughout your community. That's right, it's just as simple as putting a, a link on and having it right there accessible for all those parents and carers in your community for them to, to go through and download and go through their own homes and, and check the safety of their homes. Jason, thank you very much and let's hope we have lots of safe homes. Thank you.